So the presentation this afternoon is about uh, all the value that we can add from the digested solids coming from, in particular, dairy digesters is what we're going to look at this afternoon. And solids are kind of the poor stepchild of digestion systems often. And, um, but we need to really look at them because there's often not enough value coming from the uh, energy production or even from the nutrients and fertilizer production. So <clears throat> in looking at digested solids, uh, probably the, the basic thing is that uh, we use the same equipment that you would use in a lot of manure management to manage the solids coming out of the digester. Uh, that's often the screen presses, roller presses. So the same kinds of manure management equipment, roller presses, screens, uh, screw presses. The things that we want to look at when looking at uh, those kinds of things, sort of performance uh, measures, would be first the efficiency, the screening efficiency, which is how much of the total solids does the screen capture? And then after that, you look at what's the solids content. So a, a quick thank you to my co-authors and a, and a reminder that just because you see a picture of something in here doesn't mean that it's endorsed for any particular purpose. So again, we're going to focus on the digested solids, this particular part of that grand picture of, of anaerobic digestion, we're going to look at what the, the solids can um, give to us and what kind of value can we get from solids. Again, we're looking at mechanical separation techniques primarily, screens, presses, centrifuges, uh, separator efficiency is a first measure how much of the total solids of all the solids available does the screen get out and the numbers are very wide from 5 to 70 percent. The solids content is the ratio of solids to water in that recovered material usually expressed as a percent solids typically 12 percent up to 40 percent depending on the, uh, the system of course. Screens, you want to balance screen openings with the desired efficiency. Presses, you typically get higher separation efficiencies, higher solids contents. And often what you see now, both in manure management as well as in digestate uh, management, is using these different separation technologies in sequence. Digestion and separation work together. Digestion removes volatile solids, it leaves a very good quality or high quality fiber, it makes the nutrients more plant available, reduces odors and pathogens. Separation creates both a liquid and solid fraction and fractions of those same nutrients. This chart you can look at more in your leisure, but just take a quick note at a couple of things. The, the fiber, cellulose, hemicellulose, those are um, enhanced in anaerobic digestion solids. And you'll note here at the bottom that fecal coliform as a measure of pathogens are greatly reduced. This next table shows similar um, characteristics of digested solids from a particular facility. Note here I would the bulk density, which is um, quite a bit lower than, say, the bulk density of compost, which can be over 1,000 pounds per cubic yard. And that has some particular advantage when it comes to bedding or solids. Um, bedding is the right word because that's often the first choice. Uh, many of the uh, early digester projects, they were based on farms. The farm was looking for a way to offset their costs or for some way that they could use the energy, the power, the nutrients, and the solids on their farm. And many of them chose to, to bed their cows with the, the, uh, with the solids. Uh, some found that worked very well. Um, others didn't like it as much. Um, digestion, of course, reduces pathogens, but for many of them, they wanted a drier material, so they started looking at ways that they could uh, get some of the moisture out, uh, and they started looking at maybe a, a, a drum composter or bedding maker as, an, as a way of um, 
further conditioning the solids to make it useful as bedding. Others turn to compost and soil amendments as the next sort of logical choice for uh, their solids materials. Composting adds value to unprocessed uh, manure as well as to digested fiber. It further reduces pathogens, stabilizes the organics, making it safer for a lot of plants, gives it that dark, rich color. Solids can also be a, a part of a nice compost mix, maybe blended with other materials to enhance composting processes. A next step that many people take is to get their product certified as uh, available for organic production. Certifications are great because it's a visible signal. It's, it's a visible signal of quality. It comes from third-party verification. That means it meets the higher requirements of a value-added sector of the market. And it's really, um, for, for many processors, not that difficult to achieve. Uh, the requirements currently for organic certification, use of approved feedstocks, don't add in things that are not approved, like uh, biosolids. Uh, make sure that you're composting for the correct time and temperature, do regular testing, keep good records, and then look at specific labeling requirements. The USDA label is the label that's used for food products. And then the other labels, like the Washington State Department of Agriculture label or the, the more nationally known OMRI label, are the ones that indicate to growers of USD organic food that these products are uh, certified for production of, of organic foods. Next, you might look at what in the compost industry they've done over the, the last couple of decades to enhance value of their products. And in this slide, I'm trying to show that moving from bulk to packaged material uh, is a way to add value as well as moving from wholesale to retail is a way to add value. And both of these can increase uh, together. So bags add value because it's, they're storable, they're convenient, they're, they work for consumers. Again, you know, even smaller quantities uh, continue to add value. Producing a product line, a package line with your own brand adds value to a specific material. It's a way for you to buy less expensive materials and, and add the value and make your own mixes. And then there are specialty applications that composters have developed to blow material on or um, filter socks. All of these things are, are being done in the compost industry. What's been done specifically with digestate that's pretty exciting is creating uh, peat moss replacements. There's been extensive research at WSU it's a, it's a sort of a green, sustainable, less harmful from a climate perspective than using peat moss. The research has shown that dairy, solid digest, uh, dairy digester solids have good long fiber length, good air porosity. They retain three times their weight in water, which makes them a very good sort of replacement material for peat moss. But in this particular industry, consistency is critical. These are risk-averse users of products. So you've got to get in there and work with them carefully. The markets are potentially quite large, uh, 6.8 million tons a year, mostly imported from Canada. So this gives us the opportunity to produce something locally that, that our industries can use. And, and in Washington State and Oregon, we have big horticulture industries that we'd like to tap into. There are some commercial examples of this. Uh, Repeat was developed here in uh, Washington but more nationally known is the Magic Dirt, which has been done in association with DVO digesters. Then we can look at some specialty products. This was maybe a, a failed experiment, but uh, they looked at doing fiberboard with uh, digested solids, a subject of research at Michigan State back uh, not quite 10 years ago. But there was little commer commercialization of this. There were some patent applications, but it really depended on you know, valuing this digestate solid against other low value materials like sawdust and, and wood chip. The one specialty product that I think is a, a great example and has been a star in the digester industry has been cowpots. Uh, developed by the Freund Dairy Farm in Connecticut, cowpots are made with the, the dairy uh, manure 
after digestion. And uh, you can see Matt here working. Um, check out the uh, Dirty Jobs video uh, when you have a chance. And then Matt is giving a presentation Thursday afternoon, and I recommend that highly. It's the kind of pot that you plant your pot. The roots develop real nicely in the pot, and it just goes directly in the ground and becomes part of the soil. I'd like to talk about a couple of other potential opportunities here. Uh, vermicompost is producing uh, a, a compost or earthworm castings with uh, earthworms. The dairy fiber is a desired media for vermiculture and, and vermicomposting. But the digested solids, I think, are a bit more of an unknown. I don't think they've been uh, used uh, specifically in vermicomposting. Uh, the question I have is about volatile solids removement and, and what that would do to that. Um, commercialization efforts range from small enterprise to large. Um, they have maybe a reputation of being a little homegrown, uh, a little granola maybe. Um, at the same time, um, you might be surprised at how many earthworm castings or vermicompost products there are in the marketplace. Bagged products with high branded names. They're also used extensively in soil mixes. Uh, some of the best mixes that you probably use have earthworm castings in it with about a 5 to 10 percent uh, uh, recipe mix being an ideal. They're also a nice boutique product. Again, small amounts of material sold at a high price, adding lots of value. On the commercial level, the, the best examples here are these continuous flow vermicompost beds which lay fresh material on top of the bed and then recover the finished product from underneath using automated systems to scrape the final uh, vermicompost from below. A couple of great examples of this, the uh, uh, Sonoma Valley Worm Farm in Sonoma, California, and Worm Power in Avon, New York, they're getting upwards of $400 per cubic yard for their finished product. There's value add. The other product I wanted to touch on was biochar, another one that's getting some interest uh, from um, some growers, from um, lots of producers around the country. It's seen as a, a, a valued green substitute for filter media. Uh, it's highly valued for carbon sequestration. And the commercial activity varies uh, across the nation. You can look at this at your leisure, but what biochar does is it breaks the typical carbon cycle and sequesters carbon in the ground and produces energy in the process. So up to half of the carbon is sequestered. Biochar takes on the characteristic of the material that was turned into charcoal. This is a charcoal uh, process using pyrolysis. And some of the producers are looking at ways to create specialty products, either pelletized or uh, prilled biochar. There is some commercial uh, application, some products being developed in bags. Uh, a couple of the people selling it more commercially, you can see the prices here, 195 to 225 a yard. And then in the uh, retail market, upwards of uh, $18, $30 per cubic foot. Future advances look for maybe bioplastics uh, and green chemicals as another opportunity in this market or in this area. And in terms of conclusions, uh, if you're doing a project, think about how the end value of the digested solid best fits with your project or operation. Consider your own interests and the compatibility of any of these options with your farm or project. Look for some special strengths or assets that you have. Think about geography and where you are in relation to other markets, other end users, whether it's agriculture or consumer-based markets. Of course, conduct a feasibility analysis. Choose from a range of sizes. Look for partnership opportunities. And then be sure, really, build a business plan around this value-add enterprise. Thanks for your attention. There are some acknowledgments of funders. Thank you very much.